my name is Alistair Baird from the Darkroom in Cheltenham and today I'd like to look at push and pull processing black and white film. Now a couple of months ago I did one on push and pull processing E6, that's a transparency film, but clearly black and white's a good deal simpler, it may be something you can do at home or equally we can do here for you. So what I've done for this exercise, I've used a Nikon camera, uh, I've used Kentmere 100 ASA film because I thought that film would tend to show these effects more markedly. And what I did with the camera on a tripod is to do a whole set of exposures of the two scenes. So the first pair have been overexposed, three stops, and then the development time adjusted. Uh, the next pair exposed normally, uh, normal development, and then the final ones uh, have been underexposed three stops and then the development time extended to compensate for that underexposure. Now the results that are obtained uh, by adjusting the development time are really quite predictable and you can use the results yourself to let's say if you wanted to increase the contrast in a scene uh, or decrease the contrast um, then you can kind of plan that in advance by knowing what the effect is likely to be in the negative. Equally, if you've inadvertently under or overexposed a film, then again, you can make adjustments and uh, ensure you've got a, a decent negative for printing. Um, but I've got all these sections of film scanned in, so let's have a look at those and we can run through what those effects are in more detail. So here are the two scenes in colour. The first, some plants in dappled light. Uh, lots of natural tonal values in these. The second, these garden pots in strong afternoon light, present a lot of deep shadows and areas of plain tone. I mentioned I had made three exposures of each scene. I've underexposed, overexposed and then exposed normally. Looking left to right, the annotations here, the minus three stops, reflects the compensated development time. So the left hand images were overexposed in the camera by three stops and then the development reduced. Extended development will always increase contrast and so you can compare that in the contrast shown in these on the right hand side. Let's take a slice here at the extremes. To be honest, the pulled film still looks okay because it has lots of natural contrast. However, the pushed film has hardly any detail in these shadow areas here, and the highlights in the flowers look kind of washed out. The next frame, the pots, the slices of these look okay after being pulled, perhaps I know, lacking some shape in this right hand pot. But the pushed three stops is looking pretty punchy. There is zero detail in the shadows and very little mid-tone. In fact, it's starting to show that kind of grainy characteristic you sometimes hear described. Let's zoom in 200% and compare that gritty grainy look between frames. Bear in mind that this is a 100 ASA film, so it's fine grained and it's going to be less inclined to show grain because of the structure of slower films are inherently finer. This highlight here is showing clumps of grain compared to the pulled film. You see these areas here. And this tone in the middle pot on the rim is becoming quite coarse looking compared to the pulled film. So here's the original colour image I just took with my phone compared to the pushed film. And then there's the flowers in colour compared to, well, I'll let you work out which one it is. So much of black and white depends on lighting, on the subject matter and its context. I know you can take a light meter and densitometer and analyse the tonal values, but ultimately it's a subjective process. How you intend to display your prints is as much a part of that process as the initial composition. So here I've gone back to those original six frames, but this time I've mixed them up. Have a look, see if you can work out which is which. Now they're kind of muddled up like this. Or what if you intend to frame the pictures with a grey mount in the frame? They're going to look different again. 
Or what if we change it to a white surround? All those things make a difference. But that's the fun of black and white. It's a constant surprise and he never stopped learning. Well, I hope you found that interesting and can begin to use some of that knowledge in your own photography uh, when you're out photographing in the field. Just remember that uh, always mark up the film with some sticky tape of the instructions if you've exposed in that way. There is a whole science behind this relationship of exposure time and development called the zone system and you can check that out. It is a very technical approach, but it does underline the fundamentals of what we've looked at today. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your photography, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.